All right, y'all, what's going on, fellas? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna test out Lumineer's um, Axi antennas, their HD antennas. And on paper, it's not, doesn't have the same gain as the True RC Xairs, which is uh, what I've been running up until this point. I, I would run either all stubbies or if the, uh, the situation was necessary, then I'd run the uh, Xair directionals. But the thing that I don't like about the uh, QRC setup is that uh, the extra directionals are just really big and bulky and it makes it really hard to pack into your bag. So as you can see, here it is. It completely fits into this small little cubby because everything is just nice and small. Uh, that is definitely a little bit harder to do when you've got these big old things that kind of get stuck to it like that so right off the bat love the form factor but we got to find out does this perform all right so a couple of things to know for the test um, again this is a school building relatively thick I'll show a screen I'm like sitting here editing this and the wind noise just sucks so I'm gonna cut the audio out and instead I'm just gonna do a voice uh, voice over here from this point moving forward but here's the picture of the school from Google Maps it's a pretty big building and there's probably a whole bunch of like school things to penetrate like you know chalk and homework and whatever is in school these days also need to also show you guys what the uh, test quad is and that's this guy right here it's a uh, HDLRC sector 132 uh, it's something that they sent me over to test, just haven't gotten around to it. But it's going to be running the Cadex Vista with the stock Rush antenna. And I'm going to do this entire test with uh, 700 milliwatts and this Crossfire radio. Alright, so this is basically how the test is going to go. Like, I'm standing in this corner of this building and I'm facing in the, you know, a diagonal area and I'm just going to fly around this building and as you'll see, I'm documenting where I'm at on the map. Uh, you, all, you can also look at the uh, stats on screen as it's being recorded onto the DVR. record how far along I get and then I swap out the antennas and then I basically repeat the test and I do that with having the just a single true RC X air antenna up top and the singularity stubby at the bottom I also repeat the test with putting both uh, of the X airs so I got dual X airs I also did one where it's all singularity antennas as well as the stock DJ antennas Here's where everything landed. First of all, here's where I'm standing at, just a little reminder. And this is the direction that I was facing, so that way you have an idea of what the antenna beam is pointed at. Now, obviously, that beam is not the scale. So, here's where all of the antennas landed, right? They're not listed in any particular order, but... Uh, I mean, they all pretty much failed more or less at the same spot. Uh, the only exception here is when I ran the single x air antenna test. I don't know, I, I just know that this is definitely super inconclusive because you would think that the directionals would perform a lot better, but I mean, I spent the time doing this video, I'm trying to figure out is there anything that I can pull out of this? So then I thought, all right, well, I'm recording telemetry data maybe I can draw some conclusions out of the data. And for that, I turned over to my good friend Mario. He runs a channel called RC Shim. You should go check that out if you haven't. 
but I hit him up on Zoom. Yeah, with everybody, I, I'd like to welcome Mario, uh, aka RC Shim. Mario, thank you for taking this call. Um, you call me. For everybody at home, like I again, I don't know why I thought this was going to be a great test, but because none of them, none of them made it completely around, I feel like it doesn't really do a good justice to show the differences between these antennas because they all, for my intensive purposes, failed kind of at the same spot. So I'm gonna turn over to you, Mario. Is there any, you know, can you make any discernment out of the data that you do have? to see if any of these antennas is better than the other? Yeah, so what of, of course what I had to do in Excel, uh, shift the, the um, single charge of, uh, charts of the antennas to have them all start to degrade at the same point, because like on the one antenna, you might have taken a, a bit longer until you took off and so forth. So uh, they are all synchronized. So they all start to fail when you go a certain way behind the building. And, okay, um, so before before you tell me what you think, let me just set it up for the audience really quick. Yeah. Here, here was my original thought, right? Uh, we would take the data. I'll send it over to Mario. Mario can just take the average of everything and be like, here, clearly you had a higher average bit rate with this antenna, and you know there's your winner. But what I quickly realized the flaw in my testing, well, wait a second. What if you took longer to get to the point where you got around the building and so therefore you have more data where it's saying 50, 50, 50, uh, which would skew the results. So it's not a perfect test. But, but it's a real li life test. So it's it's not a flawed test in my opinion. It's it's uh, like real life situation. You fly behind buildings all the time. <laughs> that's, that's true, that's true. That's I. That's me, I fly, I fly behind buildings all the time. In the end, when it's really getting choppy and down to like 10 megabits, um, yeah. for me, the clear winner is antenna number five, the, the pink one. Okay. And uh, quite close is the antenna number two uh, in the in the middle <laughs> segment. On the end, it's it's then failing. So oh my if, I, okay. if I had to pick one of them, I would pick antenna five. <laughs> What's okay. it? Okay. Okay. So, so it's the chess stocks again. <laughs> The, every, <laughs> it, it's not. It's not. Okay, um, but the but the result is still not what you and I expected. Which again, I, it leads me to believe that this is a flawed test. But we'll talk about that. So antenna number five is actually all singularities on all four antennas. So the two RC singularity omnis on all four. And you know, theoretically, it shouldn't make sense for flying a building. You would think the directional would do a lot better, but yeah. In this test, it didn't. Okay, so what's the what was the next best one? Uh, I would say the next best one is antenna two, the the like kind of yellow green one. Okay, so in that case, so antenna number two was a two RC XR on top, and then the two RC singularities on the bottom. So it it mimics the luminaire axis setup. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so what was the next what was the next best one? It depends on where you look, right? Uh, if you look on the start of where you like fly a, a few meters around the building, then yeah. they are all pretty, pretty high up. But I think we should really look at the all the way on the end where yeah. where they kind of differ the most. Yeah. There also the antenna for the the red line is quite quite high up. What's the red one? <laughs> Number four is actually the stock DJI antennas. <laughs> okay. So so let me tell you let me tell you what number six is because number six is what I thought would do the best, which is dual X airs. Where did number six fall into all of this? Uh, well, pretty 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 low <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Okay, so I have some I have some thoughts about why this might not have done as good as I thought it would be. So when you put two single two X airs on, you know, um, first of all, the orientation on all these other ones, the X air was like this, and so the beam is higher this way. Um, and then when you put the two X airs on, they're sideways, but they're also tilted a little bit that way. So you kind of got you know a beam that's kind of like that. And I was facing directly straight on. And I think what was happening is that with the two X airs, I'm hitting at the very edges of the beam. And that might be why versus when I had the, the single X air, 
going this way, it, you know, the beam exactly where I got the farthest was straight on. And uh, the other thing that I think kind of skews the results is it was a really windy day. And so just like the amount of time I spent before I went around the building, there's a possibility that my time after I got around the building, I'm just kind of fighting to keep going forward where other times I just kept going forward more. And so I got closer to the end point faster. Different speeds, yeah. That, that's always uh, always hard to reconstruct. As I said, you you would ideally, you, you need a, either a flying robot or a flying RC car <laughs> that you can program yeah. to go exactly the same speed at the same, uh, even a waypoint mission would be the, the, the optimal, uh, the best uh, right. you can have. <laughs> Right, right. So even too much for, for, so, for geeks like us, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think I know what I'm going to title this video. It's going to be how not to test antennas. <laughs> Because I feel like I should have picked something where at least one of these antennas was able to to make it all the way around. Because then at least you've got, you know, you've, you've got something to base it off of. But when none of them make it all the way around uh, and, and they all kind of fail close enough to the same point, it's kind of hard. So so in real life, um, the true RC where I got one of the extras up top and the, the two stubbies at the bottom, coincidentally, that's the one that I got the farthest. So I was able to go way farther around the building than the rest of them, but the data doesn't show that. And so that's why it was, uh, it was interesting to see what the data shows versus what the video shows and explaining to everybody watching why this isn't is a very conclusive test so um, yeah all that to say it, uh, would be to uh, I assume you ran a pretty high okay and then that's um, my screen recording decided to stop right at that point which sucks because we actually started getting into how to test this in a bit more proper way so I'm just gonna have to fill this in basically the Conclusion here is that uh, this just really wasn't a good test. At the end of the day, to really do this properly, it would require multiple goggles and all the goggles sitting in the same spot with all the different antennas, and then you have one run with the drone, so that way the source data is consistent. Uh, but the other thing that we could do that Mario brought up was doing a little bit more of a softer test where we bring the milliwatts down to like 25 milliwatts, and then choosing you know, a simpler object to penetrate against and then just go off in one direction until, uh, until you lose it. And then that way you can take the data and then use the curves to see if one, you know, one of the average curves is higher than the other. We also talked about latency because latency is also important, but obviously because of the way this test was conducted, the, you know, comparing latency is, it would also just pretty much be inconclusive so um, yeah usually I like to say if I helped you make a decision today then check out the affiliate links below but in this case I know for damn sure that I didn't help any of you guys make any kinds of decisions <laughs> but hopefully you learned um, you know kind of the nuances of testing RF and you know testing RF in general is really tricky so with that said shout out to Mario please check out his channel it's uh, RC shim he actually just did an antenna test video that he just put out so please check that out and subscribe to him and uh, if anything else hit that like button that subscribe button on my channel and I'll see you on the next one which is which is probably gonna be the part two to this testing <laughs> <laughs>